guys. So today we're going to cover the topic of sampling. And uh, sampling in this unit uh, is all, in, all having to do with um, how we go about um, actually making decisions about what we measure. <clears throat> and um, the notion of all statistics is that we really uh, rarely ever sample every individual uh, in, in a, an entire population that we want to make inferences about and therefore we are always um, subsampling that population. We just call it sampling. Um, now I want to start out with um, the point that all of statistics and all of science uh, we need to have it be driven by questions and that's very important. Um, and by the way I'm trying this today on uh, my laptop um, I'm liking this pen a little bit better. Um, we'll see how it works. So, for example, let's imagine that we are going to ask uh, this question. What is the mean photosynthetic rate of, mm, let's take red maple. A common tree in this area and one that's expanding and you know it might be um, not a particularly interesting question that we're asking here because it's about a single population we're not comparing it to anything at this point um, but we might have in the back of our mind that you know this uh, particular species is expanding across the east we don't know why it's expanding perhaps it has something to do with some uh, evolution in its physiological traits Okay, so we're asking this question. All right, so uh, when we sample, in order to answer this question though, we have to ask uh, and answer many questions. For example, uh, where in the range are we wanting to sample? Now, red maple is found all over the eastern United States and we would need to make decisions. Okay, are we trying to understand generally what the photosynthetic rate is um, across the entire range? Um, or are we interested in making inferences about a smaller uh, uh, group? Within that range, which watersheds do we want to sample? Um, do we want to sample east-facing, south-facing slopes? Um, uh, so we could even add aspects to that, which aspects within which watersheds, so which aspect has to do with which way the slope is facing, and that could make a difference, for example. Um, which trees within watersheds and aspects um, and then we would need to also looking at a tree we see it has uh, architecture it has branching architecture which branches would we want to sample um, and within branches uh, we would want to say which leaves Okay, so you can see like um, leaves, now this is actually the unit on which um, we make observations. So there are a lot of choices we have to make before we get down to that level. We have to decide where in the range, which watershed, I'm going to eliminate aspect for the time being just because um, that adds a little bit of a complication here. But which trees within those watersheds, which branches within those trees, which leaves within those branches? And so there are a lot of decisions to be made. In fact, this is a nice sort of hierarchical, um, hierarchical model here. We're gonna, later on in the semester, we're gonna see that um, this is actually a nested design. So we have region, we have watershed, within region, I'm going to abbreviate region R, and then we have tree within watershed within region, 
abbreviate watershed W. And then we have branch within tree within watershed within region. And you can see this, it's nested. We have the leaf within branch, within tree, within watershed, within region. And in fact, um, at the lowest level then, the leaf is nested within branch, tree, watershed, and region. In other words, if we had an observation of a particular leaf, leaf number one here, we could also characterize it by the branch that it's found on, by the tree that it's found on, by the watershed that it's found on, and by the region that it's found within. And all of these things could contribute to the value of photosynthetic rate that we measure. Um, so all of these are nominal variables here that would have, you know, we could say branch A that we selected randomly from all the branches. We could have tree uh, 116, which is among all the trees that were in, within the watershed, we chose number 116. Um, watershed, maybe watershed number four within that particular region, and the region is uh, maybe central Appalachia. <laughs> okay, um, these are all nominal variables. We talked about that in the first video. And then we have a continuous variable photosynthetic rate here. It might be, you know, 3.476 micromoles CO2 per uh, centimeter square per second. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know what would be reasonable units, but um, let's just say we got some some value out of our infrared gas analyzer like that. Okay, so there are a lot of decisions that get to be made that have to be made along the way in terms of our sampling. Now, uh, very importantly, um, <clears throat> this sampling needs to be done randomly at every level. If, and, and the reason for that is a sample must be representative of the population. Okay, so um, the reason we don't sample non-randomly is if we did, we would be introducing bias. So non-random samples are biased. Bias just means that they are skewed uh, to be different some, in some way, shape, or form from the population that we are sampling from. We, we want unbiased samples in order to make inferences. Because if we use biased samples, our inferences will be biased. They will be, in a sense, wrong, incorrect, uh, in that they are not random samples. All of our assumptions are that we have sampled randomly at the lowest level. But we make choices in terms of defining our statistical universe. And that last slide I showed you, um, where we have this hierarchy, tells us uh, what our statistical universe is and at every level underneath that we need random sampling. <clears throat> now the reason I, I took out aspect actually I just want to mention this is that aspect might not be random. We might specifically choose north and south facing aspects because we actually expect a contrast there. So um, so that's a kind of a different variable. That's that's not a that's not a nested variable in a way. Um, it's going to be actually you could have north and south aspects in different watersheds, and so they would be what's called a crossed factor. <laughs> we'll get to that later. I don't want to um, jump ahead of myself here. Instead, I just want to emphasize that the sampling scheme that you use is very important in terms of determining the uh, statistical universe that you're going to make inferences about. And it's very important to keep that in mind when you are sampling. All right, that's it for today. Thank you.